Hey everyone, so now we are moving on to this next section. This is still quadratics, we're going to be talking about quadratics today, um, but we're focused on what's called complex, the complex number system. Okay, so the, here is your SAT question of the day. A dairy farmer uses sto a storage silo that is in the shape of a right circular cylinder above. The volume of the cylinder, of the, of the cylinder, cylinder, yeah, silo, is 72 pi. What is the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards? So I gave you the formula. They give you this formula on the AP test on the front. So don't like freak out when you, if you see something like this, go to the front of the section and it'll have this picture. So if the volume is 72 pi, that equals pi r squared h. But we know which one of those. We know the height, right? The height is 8. So 72 pi equals pi r squared times 8. So then what? We can divide both sides by 8. 9 pi equals pi r squared. We can divide by pi. So r squared equals 9, which means r equals 3. What's the question, though? What is the diameter? So if the radius is 3, what's the diameter? 6. So remember, radius is here. The radius is from the center out. The diameter is the entire thing. So we just double. Okay, so review. Solve by factoring. So this is MC chart, GCF, and dots. So use those methods to factor and then solve. So pause the video and do that. So for number one, it's an MC chart. We're multiplying to negative 4, combining to negative 3. Multiply to negative 4 is 1 and 4, and we need the 4 to be negative to give us a negative 3. Right? So that gives us x plus 1 times x minus 4 equals 0. So then when we solve, x equals negative 1 and x equals 4. So two answers. Number two, that's a GCF. So how do you factor x squared minus 4x? What's the GCF there? It's x. We were really able to divide both of those by x. So the x goes on the outside. And when we divide, x squared divided by x is x. 4x divided by x. Remember, those x's cancel, and we're left with 4. So when we solve, the outside gives us x equals 0, and then x equals 4. Again, two answers. And then number 3. 9x squared minus 4. That's a dots. So how do I do that? What times itself is 9x squared? 3x times 3x. What times itself is 4? 2 and 2, one's a plus, one's a minus. We set each of these equal to 0, so it is going to be a fraction, but it's okay. It's not a bad fraction. So minus 2, 3x equals negative 2, divide by 3. So I get x equals negative 2 thirds, and then the other one gives us positive 2 thirds. Right? We add the 2, and then divide by 3. Right. All right, solve the equation. x squared equals four, negative 4. How would we solve that? So we could add the 4. Can we factor x squared plus 4? Right. A lot of kids tell me it's x plus 2 times x plus 2. Go through, foil that out, see what happens. x squared, 2x, 2x plus 4. That does not work because those middle terms add together, right? So this is actually unfactorable, right? This is a really pretty basic equation, but it's not. we don't have a way to solve it because we take the square root of both sides, right? What times itself is negative 4? That negative under a square root, we can't do that. There's no, not, a negative times a negative 
is a positive, so there's no way to take a square root of a negative, right? It's impossible. So this is a pretty basic equation. So what the mathematicians do when they have something really basic that they can't do solve, they just make stuff up. So they made up what's called I, right? It's called it's a, in the imaginary number, right? I stands for imaginary. The square, I is the square root of negative 1, right? I is the square root of negative 1. So if we have the square root of ne negative 4, like we had before, that's the net square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is just 2. And then we just say, oh, well, the square root of negative 1 is I, right? So we just have 2i would be the, the answer for that problem. Okay. All right, complex number system. It's the set of numbers written in the form A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers. So for example, 2 plus 3i, right? 8 minus 5i, right? those are all, those are complex numbers, right? So it's using that i, but there we have other ones. We can add integers and even fractions. You could do like a third, negative a third minus 2 ninths i, that works also. Um, it's pretty standard, though. They'll always have the, the, the real number in the front, and then the second part will be have the I in it. The o, you always put the I second. I'm not really sure why. Like, I, would write, I wouldn't write 2 plus 3x. I'd write 3x plus 2. I'm not really sure why you do that with the I, but that's just, like, standard practice. Okay, so I gave you the example negative 4i before. So t pause and try the first line. So... What do you think with the square root of negative 9 would be, square root of a negative 100, and then the negative square root of a negative 49? All right, so we can break this up. I usually don't, though. Square root of ne 9 is, negative 9 is negative 1 times 9. All right. Well, what's the square root of 9? 3. What's the square root of negative 1? I. And then we always write it in the back. All right. So that's it. So you don't really have to break it up every time. We can just say, okay, what's the square root of 100? 10, and then we have a negative under the square root, so that gives us our i. Number three, same idea, 7i, but then we have that negative in front, so it's negative in front. All right, getting a little harder, 40. Now, it's not just the square root of 40i. We can simplify. What perfect square goes into 40? That's 4, right? 2 times 20, 4 times 10, 5 times 8. We look for our perfect square. So 4 goes into 40. So I'm going to write this as the square root of negative 1, the square root of 4, and then the square root of 10. Square root of negative 1 is our i. Square root of 4 is 2. Root 10 we can't do anything with, so we just leave it root 10. So I write that as 2i root 10, and that's it. All right, I want you to pause and try number 5. It's just like number 4. So what perfect square goes into 50? 25 times 2. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 2 we can't do. And then we had that negative one, that square root of negative 1, so that gives us our i. And number 6. Would that be i root 35? 35 doesn't simplify, right? It's 35 times 1 and 5 times 7. There's no perfect square. This is a trick question. You can't simplify that. It's just negative root 35. Don't overthink it. You're only putting the i when the negative is inside the square root. That negative is not inside. It's outside. So it just, that's the answer. There's nothing to do. Okay, we are going to go through and do the quadratic formula.
Right. So I'll do the first one with you, and then I want you to pause and try the other ones by yourself. So remember that the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so in this case, a is the number in front of x squared, so a is negative 3, b is 5, and c is negative 6. All right. So we're going to plug in. So x equals negative b, negative 5, plus or minus the square root, 5 squared, minus 4, a, c, all over 2, a. Negative 5, plus or minus, the bottom gives me negative 6. So remember, I put what's inside the square root in my calculator. So that's... I'm just going to type it exactly the way I see it. I got negative 47. This is, and this is why I tell you to use, uh, to not put the square root in, because if you did, the calculator wouldn't tell you it was 40, negative 47. It would say error. Um, and we don't want to have to deal with that. All right, so now, based on what we did before, can we simplify 47? No, 47 is prime, so we can't do anything there. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to pull that negative out front. So since we have a negative in the square root, what do we do with it? What's a negative under a square root? That's an i. So we're going to do i root 47, and that's our answer. Okay. So now pause the video and try number 8 and number 9 on your own. All right, so we got a is 1. B is 6, and C is 25. Negative 6 plus or minus 6 squared minus 4 times 25 times 1 all over 2 times 1. Thirty six minus 100. Is that negative 64? Yep, negative 64. So then we have x equals negative 6 plus or minus all over 2. What's the square root of 64? 8. And then since we have a negative under the square root i, and then we can simplify that. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus 4i. And that's our final answer. All right. Last one. Do this one in blue. Negative b. So we have negative uh-oh, that's a highlighter. Negative, negative b, plus or minus, negative 4 squared, minus 4 a, c, all over 2 a. 4 plus or minus all over 6. Let's see what we get in this inside. I got negative 32, so a little harder, because 32 can be simplified. So I'm going to come over here. What perfect square goes into 32? 2 and 16. The square root of 16 is 4. And then the 2. I kind of switched the order. And then we have our i. So this becomes 4 plus or minus 4i root 2 all over 6. And then I can simplify that a little bit more. And we get... 2 plus or minus 2i root 2 all over 3. So that's our answer. I divided the top and the bottom by three, 2. Remember, you can't divide inside the square root, though. All right. This is very, very difficult. Are you ready? We are adding complex numbers. So here's what messes kids up. This, what is that symbol? That is a plus. What do you do when you see a plus? You add. Don't try multiplying. We're not multiplying. So all we're doing here, it's, actually, it's very simple. We're just combining like terms. So what's 2 and negative 11? Negative 9. What is 6 and 5? I. 11i. That's it. You're done. Okay? Just combine like terms. You're not doing anything crazy. So pause and do number 11. 
So that negative 10 and 32 gives us 22. And then we have our negative 4 and positive 15 plus 11i. That's it. All right, last one's a little harder, but not much. What do we have to do first? We have, we're multiplying by a coefficient, so we're going to distribute. 18 minus 15i, negative 22, plus 16i. Now we can combine like terms. I've got 18 and negative 22 gives us negative 4. And then negative 15 and 16 gives me 1, so plus, plus i. That's it. It's not anything crazy. All right, last one. Now, this one is a little harder. So my recommendation here is because of the minus, kids always seem to mess up this negative. So I'm going to rewrite the front, negative 15 plus 5i. I'm going to distribute a negative 1. Think of this minus as negative 1, and I'm going to distribute it. Negative 1 times negative 4 is plus 4. Negative 1 times negative 7 is plus 7i. Now combine like terms. I highly, highly, highly recommend doing that instead of trying to do it in your head because there's two double negatives everywhere and it just messes everyone up. So that gives me negative 11, and then the 5 and the positive 7 gives me 12i. So pause and try 14 and 15. So again, I'm going to do the rewrite the first. There's nothing to multiply. Distribute a negative 1 through. So that becomes negative 18 plus 12i. Now I combine like terms. 14 and negative 18 is negative 4. And then negative 6 and positive 12 is plus 6i. Last one, again, I'm going to distribute first. This time I have co actual numbers other than just the negative. 10 plus 25i minus 18 plus 12i. Simplify that. I've got 10 and negative 18 gives me negative 8. 25 and 2 gives me 27i. So adding and subtracting is really just the same as if it was an X. Right? There's really no new learning there. It's just you combine like terms just like it's an X. All right, that was it. Homework.